And with me now is Labor backbencher Laurie Ferguson. Mr Ferguson, what exactly did you tell caucus today? Uh, I actually believe that uh, Labor can recover very strongly in Western Sydney if the Prime Minister personally engages with the electorate around the question of boats. Why do you think that would make a difference? Oh, because so many people raise it with me every day of the week. Uh, I think we've made recovery in regards to disability, education, training, 457s. All those issues are positives, but I think this issue is ranks over them in many parts of Western Sydney. But what would she need to tell them about boats? Look, I think she needs to tell the electorate firstly that uh, this is a very complex problem and neither the government nor the opposition can easily solve it. I think she has to actually speak in uh, common language about what regional solutions means. What does it mean in regards to Malaysian airports? What does it mean in regards to Indonesia? Uh, and I think she has to, whilst uh, indicating the uh, num numbers internationally, 10 to 12 million people displaced through underdeveloped and developed countries, that is not a, a, an admission by us that uh, we're happy with the large numbers coming here. But firstly, aren't people smart enough to understand that it's a complex uh, problem? And secondly, isn't the issue that people just want to know that you're going to do something to stop asylum seekers getting on boats? That's what they want to hear. Uh, no, I don't think people think it is complex. Uh, I think that they've got a view now that uh, somehow Tony Abbott after September is going to solve this. And I don't think he can. And I think uh, we've got to focus on that. Do you really think that people are that naive that they that they look at it in such a simple simple fashion? Absolutely. I think that because we've abandoned the field, uh, people don't take notice that he's moved from stop the boats to uh, substantially reduce, that the timeline for when they're going to actually do something is blown out, and that we're going to depend on some secret, uh, not to be revealed conversations between Julie Bishop and Indonesian ministers. That's ridiculous. And I think we've got to get stuck into them. Is the solution for you, you mentioned in, in your earlier answer that this, the issue is, the solution is for the Prime Minister to get out there personally and sell it. Is that really the solution? Is having the Prime Minister front and centre in your electorate really the answer? Uh, look, I think we're talking about a person that uh, was the Shadow Minister of Immigration, uh, reformulated the party policy against great odds within our party, had the guts to stand up to the factions on the issue, uh, and a person that knows the, knows the issue. I think also, despite all of her detractors' uh, analysis of her, one thing people think she is very tough and when I think when she actually comes clean on behalf of both political parties about this problem, it might get through. It doesn't matter if she's tough, it matters if people in your seat actually want to listen to her and are ready to listen to what she's got to say, are they? Uh, look, I, as, as I say, I would not be saying this if I didn't believe it. Uh, I think that we can recover to some degree in Western Sydney around this particular issue because it is a central issue. And I think that Julia Gill Gillard is one person that people know she's a tough nut. So how do you reconcile that then with um, the opinion polls constantly showing that people have a high disapproval rating for her, that, that people seem unwilling to listen to her? Uh, look, I don't dispute that division in our party, the nature of the way in which Rudd was replaced, that they have created image problems for Julia. But she has been the leader of a team that's been divided for the last few years. Uh, no one could do any better, quite frankly. And I think that despite those public opinion polls, she is the Prime Minister and I think people know she's got guts and, and when she says we've got to face up to a few realities in immigration, then I think people will listen to her. Isn't the problem, though, when you've got image problems, yeah. um, it's very hard to turn that around in people's minds once they've formed a view of you? Look, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't doubt the problem, right? And uh, as I say, uh, you and I and everyone else would fail abysmally in a context where we've had so much division in, a, in an organisation. Football teams, tuck shops, who cares? Uh, she's overcome that to, to a degree to keep going, which very few other people would have been able to manage. I actually think that this issue is central, as I said, and I think that she's one person that, by engaging the electorate, unlike the opposition, staying a bit honest with people uh, about how complex this is and how difficult it is, and that there are no easy options for either side of politics. The sooner someone does that, the better. Often, though, in a corporate or even a political situation, when you've had a period of division, what's required to move beyond that is a fresh face, not somebody who's been involved in the division. Yeah, well, I can't see any options, quite frankly. Do you think it's possible for Julia Gillard to get a tap on the shoulder from her colleagues? I don't know why they do that. Um, I, I, I had the experience with Chris Hayes, my uh, uh, regional uh, fellow colleague, uh, to go to uh, a, sem a huge uh, public event at the Whitlam Centre in Liverpool, which is on the edge of both of our electorates. And I see all this supposed dislike of Julia, the polls, etc. And I personally could not believe what occurred there. I would not have predicted it. Hundreds of people thronged around her, as they do about, around other leaders. And, you know, I'm not as sure that uh, she can't recover this, quite frankly. Laurie Ferguson, thank you for your time tonight. Thanks very much.